Broncos have had to dump a lot of salt on our roads and sidewalks in recent weeks. While it's helpful for de-icing, that salt can be really awful for your car, shoes, carpet, winter gear. Lauren Winfrey has one solution. It's that time of year where road salt is just everywhere. It can get in your car, outside your car, on your clothes, and even on your boots. So when those clothes need a little extra TLC, it may be time to send them over to an expert. The roads are wet and sloppy, and the sidewalks, well, they're salty, making it nearly impossible to avoid salt-stained clothes, shoes, and even bags this winter in Wisconsin. It's a messy world right now. So yeah, I'll bet our, our business for pants and coats double during the melting period. Keith Klabundi owns Keith's Cleaner in Wauwatosa. These aren't that bad. And has been in the cleaning business for a couple of decades. Here's a salt one. Klabundi says he's all too familiar with salt stained apparel and has a few tips for those of us trying to keep it clean while maneuvering through the slush and snow. In a sloppy weather, don't wear light clothes because it's really hard to get that out. I mean, that, that those little dark dots that you'll see on a white pair of off-white pants or whatever, Sometimes you can't even get those off. Clabundi says the salt rings you find on your coat and shoes come from all the salt dumped to melt the ice on streets and sidewalks. In fact, the city of Milwaukee alone anticipates dumping about 55,000 tons of salt each year, which may make it difficult to keep clothes clean, but Clabundi says he's sure he can find a solution for your dirty clothes. And when thinking about getting the outside of your car wash, you may want to keep in mind getting the inside wash too. All this salt can get on your clothes but if you keep those carpets clean, you can keep your clothes a lot cleaner too. Reporting in Milwaukee, Lauren Winfrey, today's TMJ4. It is definitely hard to keep up with. For all things weather, go to TMJ4.com for our live radar, interactive maps, and much more. More local news now. A two-year-old remains hospitalized tonight after nearly drowning in a hotel pool. It happened at the La Quinta Inn on Port Washington Road in Glendale just before 10 this morning. A witness says the toddler was not breathing when he was pulled from the pool. A police officer performed CPR on the child who was then rushed to the hospital. The new interim head of Milwaukee's health department says the science is still out on whether there's a link between some vaccines and autism. Patricia McManus was overwhelmingly approved by the Milwaukee Common Council to be the interim leader of the health department earlier this week. Her comments on vaccines and autism came during an interview on a local radio talk show. A statement from the CDC says there is no link between vaccines and autism. So does a board member for Wisconsin's American Academy of Pediatrics and one of the leading experts on immunizations. The information that's out there, especially from CDC, um, they basically say there's there's been no way of knowing that there's been uh, a linkage between uh, autism and uh, MMR. The other thing that's really important to keep in mind is there is no controversy in medicine. We're not still thinking that there's a, a, a link or a, we're not still looking for a link. There is no link. Now, the Common Council approved McManus by a 13 to 1 vote earlier this week. Common Council President Ashanti Hamilton says he stands by McManus's appointment as the interim leader, and the mayor can still veto that. McManus released a new statement last night saying she made sure her children got all their required vaccines. A group of crooks in Mount Pleasant turned the Foxconn development into a way to rob people. A couple in their 80s was scammed in their own home. A man posing as a Foxconn worker lied to get himself and three others inside the home. They took off with cash and jewelry. They acted like they hit a water main during construction. And once the couple got suspicious, the burglars were already inside. But what could we do? If we'd have said, approached them or something, we, who knows what they'd have done to us. <laughs> now that couple hopes others will learn from their mistake. The suspects left in a cream-colored SUV. To the Winter Games on today's TMJ4. It is just after 9 a.m. on Sunday in South Korea. That's kind of hard to wrap your brain around. Speed skating, figure skating, and alpine skiing among the many events scheduled for the day. Delaney Bry is live at the Pettit National Ice Center. She joins us now with a look ahead to some of the highlights for our local athletes. Delaney. 
Thanks, Katie. It's been an exciting game so far, especially for our Wisconsinites who are there competing. Quick update on our curlers, Matt and Becca Hamilton. They lost to China earlier Saturday morning, but they did beat Norway and will play Finland later tonight around 9 o'clock. Coming up in sports, we'll take a look at figure skater Brady Tunnell and her coach Denise Myers, who happens to be a Wisconsin native. Tunnell is set to make her Olympic debut during our primetime coverage tonight, skating her short program for the team event. If you are trying to plan out your Sunday, though, Marquette Golden Eagle Emery Lehman will be the first long track speed skater to go for gold for Team USA. Lehman will skate the 5,000 meter at 1 o'clock tomorrow morning, but don't worry, you can watch the event at 2 o'clock in the afternoon right here on TMJ4. Before we go, let's bring you a quick medal count update. The Netherlands and Norway are on top with four medals each. Germany has two. Meanwhile, South Korea, Sweden, Czech Republic, Finland, and the Olympic athletes of Russia have one each. No medals for the United States yet, but Sunday, which is today there, but tomorrow here, there are seven medal competitions. Multiply that by three, and that means 21 individual medals up for grabs. Reporting live from the Pettit Center, Delaney Bride, today's TMJ4. I'm feeling good about our chances. Thanks, Delaney. Coming up on the Olympic Zone at 630, it's home away from home for the 5,400 athletes taking part in the Winter Games. Find out what it's like to live in the Olympic Village in Pyeongchang. That's coming up on the Olympic Zone right after Live at 6. And you can get an Olympics roundup in your email inbox every morning during the games by signing up for our Winter Olympics newsletter. Find out which Wisconsin athletes will be competing and all of the latest news from Pyeongchang. Sign up on our app or at tmj4.com slash Olympics. And just ahead, on a mission, a historic restoration about to take place as the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 space mission draws near. Plus, she hit the gas instead of the brake, and you see what happened. The miraculous outcome of a very terrifying plunge. More news now on Live at 6. We're continuing to follow a tragic story out of Ohio where two police officers were shot dead late this morning. It happened in a home in a suburb of Columbus. The officers responded to a 911 hang up call and were shot after arriving on scene. A suspect is in custody. A woman in Houston drove her car off the third floor of a Houston parking garage and managed to walk away without any injuries. She accidentally hit the gas pedal instead of the brake. That sent her SUV plunging and crashing into an apartment below. The Houston Fire Department says it's a miracle. Both the driver and the man inside that apartment were not hurt. In California, two people were injured in an accident involving a motorcade for Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. It happened near the Ronald Reagan Library when an SUV pulled out in front of the motorcade and collided with a highway patrol officer on a motorcycle. There were no serious injuries and Trudeau's vehicle was not involved in the collision. SpaceX successfully tested its Falcon Heavy rocket this week, launching a Tesla Roadster into orbit on a hopeful path for Mars. But back here on Earth, some pieces of space history are about to get a facelift. Ryan Korsgaard reports on what's in store for the historic mission control councils that helped send man to the moon. Three, two, one. We have liftoff of these historic mission control flight consoles. They safely guided man to the moon and back home. Now they're headed to Kansas for restoration. I'm keeping an eye to make sure that everybody is doing everything historically accurate. Adam Graves will make sure everything in this room is safely moved and then returned. When the work is finished, mission control will look like it did when we landed on the moon nearly 50 years ago. I know when I walk in the door, I feel special. You know, I feel like something very important happened here. I don't want to touch anything. I don't feel worthy. He wants the Johnson Space Center visitors to understand the significance. Space Center Houston has raised four of the needed five million dollars for this project. This space is uh, fallen into some disrepair over the years. It's one of the most popular attractions when people visit Space Center Houston and we take them behind the scenes here at Johnson Space Center. So this is the gallery overlooking Mission Control where the families would sit during the launches. He said this really hasn't changed, especially the upholstery. It's original. So they're going to take it off, clean it, and put it right back. So when guests come to visit, you're going to be sitting in the actual seats that family members and officials sat in to observe our uh, lunar program.
Very cool. And for those excited to see the restored control room, the project is expected to be complete by July of 2019. And coming up, Storm Team 4 meteorologist Alicia Wilson with the latest on a winter weather advisory for some of our counties tonight. And it's called fubbing. More and more Americans are snubbing their significant other for their cell phone. But it's not too late to stop it. Next. Welcome back. Valentine's Day is right around the corner, so Starbucks is debuting a new treat. It's a cherry mocha latte. It's hot espresso poured over a slightly sweet mocha sauce and candied cherry syrup. I bet there's no calories in that. It's being sold now until February 14th. At the Fister Hotel in downtown Milwaukee, Valentine's Day has officially uh, gone to the dogs. They're offering a special Valentine's Day wedding package for dogs who are in love, but it comes at a price, $3,600. It includes an officiant for the dogs, a professional photographer, happy hour with a buffet for 10 humans plus the dogs, and a two night stay in a luxury suite. I don't understand. We've all had it done to us. In the middle of a conversation, someone looks down and becomes engrossed in their phone. Well, when it comes to romantic relationships, there's a name for it now. It's called fubbing. And as Liz McLaughlin reports, it may be taking a toll on your love life. Look around and you might catch everyone else looking down. Rude, so rude. A recent study shows that we check our phones 150 times a day on average. That's once every five minutes. It's a habit that can have us reaching for our phones even when someone else is talking. And when this is like a constant thing, a, a, a constant pattern, it's just starting to erode our relationships. Researchers at Baylor University found the act of snubbing our partners for our phones or fubbing is on the rise. And almost half of those in romantic relationships say they've been fubbed. Put the phone down. Look what's in front of you. <laughs> Beautiful women. Experts say the first step is awareness. Take note of how often you use your phone and cut down on distractions by turning off social media alerts and unnecessary notifications. Each time that just breaks our concentration. It takes us out of the moment. Experts also suggest setting a phone free zone, such as the dinner table. This Valentine's Day, you might want to trade the stuffed animals and chocolate for some quality time together. Put your phone down for two hours. Come on. I'm going on a couple's massage. Hey, you know, that's what I'm going to do. No phones are there. <laughs> because the best gift might just be your full attention. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. Isn't that the truth these days? If you can't bear to turn the phone off or keep it out of sight, experts say at least put your phone face down if you put it on a table. Yikes. Snowplow crews in northern Indiana with an Olympic size effort today. They worked in tandem on an interstate after a foot of snow fell. South Bend received over 10 inches of snow on Friday alone. That's a new single day record for that city. Some plows around here are going to be out again tonight. Alicia Wilson here with the Storm Team forecast. Well, thankfully, we're not going to see that much snowfall, but again, another round of snow headed our way. This is going to be the sixth time that we've seen snow in the last seven days. So if you're going to be heading out this evening, we'll be in great shape. We'll keep it cloudy and cold falling down into the teens. But you notice around two o'clock in the morning, that's when we start to see that light snow working its way into the area and continuing right on through tomorrow morning. So it's going to be a busy 12 hours for us as we'll see snowfall pushing in through the overnight right on into your Sunday morning. The winter weather weather advisory is in effect for Racine, Kenosha and Walworth counties. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw this extended a little bit farther towards the north, but we'll see what the National Weather Service does with that. Cloudy skies across southeastern Wisconsin at this time and back off to our west. That's where that weak disturbance is right now over Kansas and Nebraska. You can see that the snow is now working its way into Omaha and it's going to be pushing towards the east over the next couple of hours into Iowa. Still seeing some light.